Welcome to another amazing edition on this Saturday edition of Zeta Global Radio. I am your host, Lainey Savante Quirk, and I am super excited. I say that all the time. I'm excited and thrilled, but I'm super <laughs> excited. Everyone is touched by, and I think it's all a mysterious and cosmic uh wonderment for all of us as to what is happening when we go to sleep at night, what we're dreaming about, why we're dreaming about it, and where do these dreams come from. And some are good, some seem bad, but they all have some meaning that I'd like to find out more. So we gathered some incredible experts today. There'll be three of them talking about what they know from their perspective, from their professional uh, acumen. So I'm excited for the first half hour, we're gonna have nationally known authors, Catherine and Patrick Andrews here with us today. And they are authors of Naked in Public, Dream Symbols Revealed. And Catherine also authored a dream book geared towards children called The Dream Doctor, both published by Ozark Mountain Publishing. And Patrick and Catherine also founded the School of Intuitive Arts and Sciences Sciences, which provides a vehicle for soul growth and evolution for themselves and others. So we're in good hands, people, and I'm excited. So welcome to the show, Catherine and Patrick Andres. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Welcome, welcome. So I guess let's just get right into it. I, uh, I am certainly um, curious as to where we're going to go here. So let's just start with the topic itself from the book, Naked in Public, Dream Symbols Revealed. Because when I hear that immediately my mind starts to wonder what that means, and it must have several meanings. So let's just go right there. Um, naked in public actually has uh, two meanings, which I really like, double meanings and things. And uh, so first of all, when um, naked, being naked in public is a very common dream symbol that people have. And so most people can probably relate to having at least one dream of showing up to school and they're just in their underwear or they show up to work, they realize they don't have their pants and so um, that's a very common dream symbol that people often have. But in dreams, whenever uh, you show up naked, it actually represents honesty that's occurring. And then however you uh, react to that recognition of, of the honesty, you know, sometimes we um, are embarrassed and that would be times when maybe we were a little bit more honest that day than we feel comfortable with and later we kind of realize we've sort of exposed ourselves uh, to somebody a little bit more than we're comfortable with. And so um, when we learn how to interpret our dreams, it increases our honesty. And so we get very honest feedback from our subconscious mind in terms of things that are going on in our lives. So are you saying, uh, from your experience, the dreams that happen in that night, are they transpired from what happened during that day, or that just happens to be one of the reasons why we do dream that specific dream at night? Well, we dream every night, and the dreams are always a reflection of the previous day's uh, thoughts and actions about what occurred during the day. So every dream can always be applied to what you were thinking and reflecting about the previous day. So I have a practice each night. I uh, go into my own particular meditation where I clear myself of the day and kind of cut ties to things that no longer served me or if they were great, I kind of rejoice in the gratitude of what did transpire. And I wonder if any particular prayer or mantra uh, affects what you'll be dreaming. I, I know that that has been like some people say, for a better sleep, make sure you clear yourself of the day. I wonder if you could attest to that. Well, yeah, actually in the book, too, we offer a lot of suggestions to help people have a better sleep, have a better dream recall, and so forth. Uh, but basically, um, because dreams are a reflection of what you thought about during the day, um, any thoughts that you would think right before bed could also impact the dream state. Um, we dream throughout the night we, in 90-minute cycles. So as we go through these 90-minute cycles, about the last 10 to 15 minutes of those cycles are when we go into the REM stage, rapid eye movement. And mm -hmm. scientists have studied and found that that's when actually dreaming occurs. So we're having these little snippets of dreams throughout the night. So um, depending on how strong the thought is right before bed, that could impact the dream state. Um, when people don't remember their dreams, we find that it's usually because they're you know, worried, anxious, they have all their attention on events in their physical world. So it is helpful to do a type of clearing or meditation or some kind of nightly ritual that calms the mind and body, a bath, 
is a really good idea too. We recommend not eating heavy proteins at night. The lighter carbohydrates are actually better um, to eat in the evening. They won't weigh the system down so much. And so eating those lighter foods also helps to not have all the attention focused on digestion, but rather, you know, on sleep, regeneration, and dreaming. So all those little keys um, can help with, you know, producing a better sleep and better dreams. I'm so glad you said that because I had actually the opposite diet. I thought, well, always go heavy with proteins in the morning, and then you kind of just, I'm sorry, uh, carbs in the morning, and then you do proteins at night because I thought, well, okay, if I'm going to do carbs, I'm going to do them towards the morning so I can burn them off and do protein at night. So maybe that's, I'm going to switch that up because I have been having some incredibly wacky dreams of late. So I'm going to see if <laughs> that one works. That's yeah, great. what's actually happening is that um, at night when you go to sleep, your digestive system starts shutting down. And so if, the, if you have a lot of uh, heavier proteins, they take longer to break down. And so when your digestive system shuts down, then you have a lot of undigested food in your system. And so the much lighter uh, foods break down quicker, and then it leaves your digestive system, uh, you know, cleaner and and, uh, fresher. So that, you know, there's a reason why we call it breakfast, because we're fasting during the night. What about uh, if people want to have dreams or dreams that come in of people who've uh, already transitioned? How does that come into play with our dreams? Well, we... Uh, do have an experience of dreams that we describe as a visitation that can occur sometimes. Now, this may show up a couple of different ways, and so we always ask the person to uh, observe whether or not the person's uh, lips are moving. That's a good way to identify whether this is a visitation or an actual dream symbol. So whenever people show up in our dreams, typically they represent an aspect of ourselves, and they are symbolic. And so most of the time, this is how you can interpret a person in your dreams. And so that's what we always recommend looking at first. Um, So if the person is talking to you normally, like you're just sitting there having a conversation and their lips are moving and everything seems normal, then they're probably a symbolic aspect of yourself. And so you'd look at that person in terms of how you would describe them in one or two words uh, that describe the quality of the person, like if they're outgoing or if they're shy, things like that, in one or two words, uh, just to kind of make it simple. Uh, and that gives a reflection of the, the aspect of yourself that you're working with. But then <clears throat> sometimes people can show up in our dreams and they're just standing there over us, maybe, and smiling and not really saying anything. Or sometimes we can actually hear their thoughts almost like they're thinking to us, but their lips aren't even moving. And this is when we've discovered that you can identify that a visitation is occurring because um, the communication at that level doesn't occur the same way. So um, sometimes, you know, people who have passed, they'll come and uh, deliver messages to us. You know, they're trying to uh, kind of um, bring closure to some of the relationships that they had during their life, or maybe they're just coming to give additional support because they now have a different perspective on life, and so they can offer that uh, broader perspective to us to kind of help us through a difficult situation or things like that. So um, that is something that's actually very common, and it's, it's pretty fascinating to hear some of these stories from people um, of experiences they've had. And we've heard many, many cases of, of people who have had visitations. It seems like, you know, Quite a few people receive visitations from people who have passed. That's beautiful. And in your book, when you say the title is The Symbols Revealed, does that mean that the, are there certain symbols that you can maybe just give us some, a few of them that if you see this, you'll, um, that it means that? Because I know that a lot of people are into symbology and even totems with animals. So I'm curious to see like what, what certain symbols may be, almost like an interpretation for a guideline for people. Sure. Well, the way we look at symbols are based on the function that they have in, the, in our world. So, for example, the car. So the, the function of the car, you know, gets us from point A to point B. And so we look at it from the soul's perspective, well, what gets the soul around while it's living in the physical world? It's the body. So therefore, a car symbolizes the physical body. So if you're driving this, you know, great sports car, flashy red convertible, and you're cruising down the street, that's a reflection that your physical body, or at least you're viewing your physical body as being in very good shape, 
Now, if you're having a dream where you're running out of gas or your car is breaking down, that would be an indication that maybe you need more food in your diet. Maybe, you know, you need to have a checkup. There's something going on with your body that's lacking energy, needs some attention. Um, Another common symbol is um, animals. So we all have our favorite pets and so forth that appear in our dreams. But basically all animals are habitual. In other words, they eat, they sleep, maybe they hunt, but they, all, they pretty much do the same thing. They don't really imagine. And so in our dreams, uh, pets, any kind of animal would represent a habit. And so you'd really examine closely the animal in the dream to discover what habit that would be relating to. So here's an example. I used to have a lot of dreams of dogs. And at the time, I did have my own dog. And the one thing I thought about dogs was they, they really want to please their master or their owner. And so I realized that these dogs appearing in my dream were reflecting back to me my habit of wanting to be please everybody, be a people pleaser. Um, so, you know, a, a big alligator that's trying to eat you in the dream would be a more destructive habit. could be something like smoking. Um, you know, a little fly or something that's buzzing around you and bothering you in your dream, well, that's just a pesky little habit. It's not going to be very dangerous to you, but in some way um, it could bother you. What about running? I've had dreams where you feel like you're just stuck in molasses, like you just can't move forward. It's just like, what is that? Um, I'm sure that's probably an easy one, but... (laughs) That pretty much reflects an attitude during the day of a person who is just mentally racing a million thoughts a second, trying to, um, you know, get everything done, multitasking. And often when we do that, we actually get less done. So it's the type of person who's mentally racing around without like a big plan of what they're going to do and how they're going to execute it. So it's kind of the idea of rushing around and getting nowhere, okay? So people who have that dream basically would benefit by taking some deep breaths during the day, visualizing, making a list of what they have to do, going through their day calmly, and and visualizing themselves before doing these activities. So it's like a mental rehearsal. So when they actually do it, they get it done quicker and more efficiently, and their day just seems to flow. And then they're not this running in slow motion, which, of course, is very frustrating. I think you've just totally nailed me to the wall, Catherine. Thank you for that publicly. (laughs) Well, when we come back, I think we're going to have to really touch on what I think a lot of people want to know about is nightmares. And we will talk about nightmares for grownups. And of course, we can get right into in the next segment about the Dream Doctor, which is geared towards nightmares for children. So stick around. We have so much more with authors Catherine and Patrick Andres. We are here on Zeta Global Radio. We will be right back. Hello, my name is Akashiana. Join us next week on Zeta Global Radio as we journey into the world of ayahuasca, the sacred plant medicine. The tiny homes movement seems to be exploding all over the world. People are choosing to downsize their homes into more affordable mobile versions of their dream homes. World famous painter and craftsman Michael Ostoski is also owner of Roadrunner Homes unique, one-of-a-kind land yachts that are ready to hit the road when you are. Be sure and take a look at some of the Roadrunner homes for sale at facebook.com slash groups slash Roadrunner Tiny Homes. Custom orders are welcome. Remember, with Roadrunner Homes, home is where you park it. Hi, this is Michael Ostaski, and you're listening to Zeta Global Radio. Welcome back to ZGR. I'm Lainey Savante Quirk, and I am really thrilled that we are here with nationally known authors Catherine and Patrick Andres here with us speaking about their book, Naked in Public, Dream Symbols Revealed. If you missed the first segment, be sure and go back to our Facebook page or bbsradio.com slash Zeta Global Radio to catch the archive because this is not a show you'll want to miss one moment of. We talked all about different ways that we are interpreting dreams, why we are. And now we're getting into a very big subject, of course, that lots of people want to know about, adults and children alike, is the subject of nightmares. So take it away, you professional dreamers. (laughs) What is this all about? You know, we've talked about our reflection and uh, one of the things, uh, reflection of what's going on during the day. And one of the things we talked about earlier was that 
Um, cars, for example, um, represent the physical body, but um, you know, one aspect of that too is that uh, that can actually reflect a health dream. Uh, but there's another aspect too that um, uh, when we have a dream that's recurring, often it can uh, develop into a nightmare. And um, so sometimes this actually shows up as a pattern that's recurring. And so um, it may not actually start out as a nightmare when this uh, common theme shows up over and over again. Um, but then it can develop into a very um, extreme kind of an experience, which is when we would describe it as a nightmare. And uh, so these are very important to look at because they um, give us a, uh, an important look at something that needs to change in our lives. And uh, so, um, you know, one thing that could occur is, uh, for example, if a, a car is not, um, you know, working properly, um, during the day, um, you have uh, some brake problems or the car won't start. Um, you know, that's something that um, is indicating there's a health problem that could occur, and sometimes we find that within about two or three days after having that kind of a dream, uh, you might have an actual illness or something like that develop. Um, other types of dreams could be uh, more extreme and, and scary, especially for children. Um, and uh, so those are ones to look at, that there's something definitely that's occurring that needs to change um, in the life. And so a lot of times we find uh, nightmares with children reflect an attitude of feeling like a victim or that you don't have control over your life. So, for example, with kids, a lot of times children feel they can't make their own decisions in life, like their parents or their teachers are always telling them what to do. And so they feel like life is happening to them, that they have no control over it. And hence in the dream, they have this, you know, big scary monster who's coming after them and they feel like a victim. So with kids, to help them deal with nightmares, the best thing you could do is give them more choices in life. You know, let them decide what they're going to wear that day to school and, you know, let them choose what activities they want to do. And then they start feeling more powerful, like, oh, I do have control over my life. Um, and likewise with adults who have nightmares, there's some kind of deep subconscious attitude of being a victim. You know, things are happening to me. The monster's coming at me. So as an adult, you can start visualizing, recognize you are a powerful creator, and you can create whatever you want in your life. A lot of people will make a list of things they want to do, you know, and start fulfilling that. And then they're like, oh, well, I, I do have power over my own life. And then, as Patrick was saying, those recurring dreams can stop. The recurring nightmares will turn into dreams where, for example, you're flying, which actually shows an attitude of limitless thinking that you are powerful and you could do anything. There's no limits. People have told me, and thank you for that. That's really helpful. People have told me in the past that when you see something frightful coming into your dreams, it means that it's being cleared on the astral plane, that, that it won't actually manifest into the physical. What do, what do you think of that? Well, we have a little bit different perspective because dreams are actually reflecting what's happening in our consciousness. So in some ways, it is actually already happening in your life, but the dream is, is reflecting what's occurring in your thinking. So, for example, if um, somebody's chasing you, that's a very common dream that people have that develops into a nightmare. Um, there might be like a dark figure or just somebody who's, who's very intimidating or frightening uh, that starts pursuing you. And this is another example of where uh, it may not start out as a nightmare, but then it gets scarier and scarier as you go on. So that is reflecting a part of yourself because remember we were talking about people represent an aspect of yourself. And so um, there's some part of yourself that is really giving you a lot of anxiety. And uh, I had a, a really great story of a student who um, she was learning how to um, wake up in her dreams and have more awareness in the dreams. We call that lucid dreaming. And so she was applying what she was learning with her lucid dreaming with this case. She was being pursued by a woman, actually, it turned out. And so she just stopped in the dream, and she turned around, and she confronted the woman. She said, who are you, and what do you represent for me? And she said, I represent your low self-esteem. So this person uh, represented this kind of sense of low self-value or self-worth or uh, competency that um, was always kind of like 
pursuing her. No matter what she did, there was always this thought, I'm not good enough, and, you know, I'm not really worthy of this position that I have. And so once she realized that, she was able to start making changes. And that's, you know, when we're talking about um, a nightmare giving you an indication of a change that needs to be made, once you identify what that thing is in your life that is uh, creating that anxiety, then you start making changes in your life by affirming your worth, by uh, reminding yourself of all the things that you've accomplished, that you are competent in your position, and, and making those changes in your thinking, and then your dreams will start changing in a reflection of that. Mm, that's interesting. I'm wondering if this is a myth or not, because uh, you are dispelling some other ones. I, I think I've been given a whole load of stuff I, I don't know is true, but one of the other things I've heard as well is that if you die in your dreams, yeah, I mean, this is probably something you've heard a lot, that, that that's a reflection. Like, you usually wake up just before you die, or if you never really, it never really goes to the end. Tell me, tell me if that's something that you've dealt with. Well, um, first of all, just the symbol of death in a dream represents change. Most of us are actually afraid of change, <laughs> and hence in the dream, we're afraid to die. Uh, you know, if people are coming at us, we're always trying to, to save ourselves. But the actual um, process of waking up in the morning, uh, we actually move through various levels of consciousness to come to the first level or the conscious mind. And so that process of coming down through the levels, people often experience as a falling motion and afraiding, and then they're afraid that they're going to, to hit the ground, but then they wake up. So actually what's occurring is their consciousness is moving through these different levels, and then the, the hitting the ground is actually when you wake up. <laughs> Do you, are you able to, if you're in the middle of, say, a really good dream, let's say it's not a nightmare and you just don't want that dream to end, but someone actually wakes you up, there's no, is, there, is it possible to go back to sleep and, like, part two takes place? Or once, it's, once you're up, it's, it's gone? No, that is possible, and um, we've done that ourselves, and we've had students who have reported being able to do that. And sometimes it's just a matter of um, going back into that sort of in-between state, and often when we're waking up, especially toward the end of our sleep, uh, we stay in more of what we call a reverie state. It's sort of in between being awake and, and being asleep, and um, in that state you actually can go back in and, if you visualize some of the elements of the dream, then sometimes you can go right back into that. And sometimes you can, you can pick up where you left off and continue. And sometimes it goes in a little different direction, but it's always going to be relevant to what's occurring in your thinking and in your life. And so those are things that, you know, you can still record uh, and interpret. And it also has a lot to do with becoming more conscious in the dream state and this takes practice this takes time um the more the, you know the first step is just you know recording the dreams being beginning to interpret them becoming more familiar with the symbols that's the first level of awareness and then you know the more that you interpret the dreams the more that you have that open flow between your subconscious and conscious mind then when you're actually in a dream you'll often experience recognizing oh i'm in a dream and then uh, another level of awareness in the dream state is saying to yourself as you're in the dream, oh, I want to remember this. And then another level is, oh, I, I want to stay in this dream. And so often people will be in that in-between state, what we call the reverie state, where they're remembering the dream or they're actually reviewing the dream so that they'll remember to write it down. So this is all just bringing greater conscious awareness into that dream state. And the more you do that, the more you're able to just pop back into a really good dream. I love it. Well, thank you for that. And you know, we only have a couple minutes left. And I just want to thank you for uh, these two books, but particularly The Dream Doctor. I'm excited as, as a mother of a uh, smaller, well, one is smaller uh, still. And being able to have a reference guide to explain. I mean, I think we need, as parents, need to be educated on what is happening in our dreams. So when the children come to us and say, we had a nightmare or we dreamed this, and mostly I think kids come to you when, uh, at least mine, when they have a nightmare, and they don't really ever say, I had the best dream ever. It's mostly like, oh my God, I'm scared. So having other um, educational reference points to, you know, pass down to them, I think is so helpful, so I'm excited. Yes, the, the Dream Doctor character uh, was actually created to help 
give kids peace of mind that dreams, you know, are not reality. They're not going to happen in your life when you wake up. So don't be afraid of them to, to face the dreams and just realize they're just some messages that are coming to you. And it gives kids a little bit of peace and security when they go to sleep at night. And then, you know, as, as parents, we can encourage them to tell us their dreams every morning, not just waiting for when they have this big scary dream and they wake us up with it. So, you know, now our daughter, who's very familiar with dreams, you know, she'll tell us all her dreams, whether they're scary or, you know, just a regular interesting dream. And so we kind of make it a family activity to talk about our dreams at some point in the day. If we don't have time in the morning, we'll do it after school. Do you all keep as a family journals and logs of your dreams? I do. Uh, we, We have a journal for our daughter who, you know, if she's not rushing to get ready for school, she does jot down her dreams as well. So yeah, it's definitely a family practice. Well, Catherine and Patrick, thank you so much for being here. And I think we'll have to do this again. Next up on the uh, other half of our segment of dreams, we'll have David Ravinas here talking about his book. And we will continue this incredible subject of what is happening when we go to sleep at night. We'll be right back on ZGR. ZDR is excited to be a media partner at this year's Pure Living Expo taking place in Sedona, Arizona, July 23rd through 27th. Get ready to cleanse, rejuvenate, and empower yourself with the best of the best health luminaries of today. This gathering is more than just workshops, talks, and keynote presentations. You'll experience those along with the Pure Living Cafe, Earth School, Expo Showroom, a dance party, and so much more. Come for the live professional food prep demos with some of the most celebrated living food chefs, meet the wellness experts who are changing the future, and of course, take part in the incredible scenic and magical energy that only Sedona has worldwide. Get your tickets now at purelivingexpo.com. Use special code ZGR2015 and you'll get 10% off your tickets. I'll see you there in the land of the Red Rocks at Pure Living Expo, July 23rd through 27th. Hi, I'm Sarah Jones, wellness advocate with doTERRA. Happy to be here on Zeta Global Radio. My special offer to all ZGR listeners is a lemon oil and A to Z essential oil guide when you visit mydoterra.com forward slash Sarah Jones and purchase $30 or more. I'm looking forward to supporting your journey to health and wellness. Hello and blessings, ZGR listeners. I'm Tom Carlson from Tech Love in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Tech Love is a conscious community of light center located in the heart of Knob Hill. Our space offers a warm and inviting setting for all of your gatherings. We invite and enjoy hosting pilgrims who are guided in the oneness throughout the world. From meditation and channeling groups, drum circles, kirtans, and other healing events, we are here as a physical location to draw people into communication with their higher purpose, oneness. If you're coming through New Mexico or already here, visit us at 3901 Central Avenue Northeast, just east of Carlisle, or visit us on the web, techlove.us. Namaste. Welcome back to Zeta Global Radio. We are here today talking about dreaming. And if you didn't know, there's actually daydreaming and night dreaming. And to tell us more about it, I am very proud to have David Ravinas here. He is the author of Always Dreaming, Gaining Insights from the Metaphors of Our Sleeping and Waking Lives. And just a little bit about David. He has taught dream classes on three continents and in four languages, highlighting both nighttime and waking dreams. He's also also presented frequently at conferences, including the annual seminar of the International Association for the Study of Dreams. He participates in online dream-related blogs, teaches classes by Skype from his hometown of Portland, and we are here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, speaking with him now. Welcome, David, to the show. Thanks, Lainey. Thanks for having me. This whole show is all about dreams. A lot of people want to know more about it. We all participate, experience the good, the bad, the everything about dreams. And of course, we had Catherine and Patrick Andres here in the first half hour. So tell us more from your perspective what you your experience has been in dreaming. Well, I'm sure uh, Catherine and Patrick would agree that uh, dreams are essentially an internal dialogue, um, usually a conflict of some sort that's uh, uh, 
that has to do with trying to reconcile something that you feel you should do as opposed to something that you want to do. And if you're not facing that uh, in a way that brings some sort of resolution to you, then it's going to manifest itself in a series of metaphors, really. That's the language of dreams. Um, and the metaphors come to us often in strange uh, um, uh, symbolic uh, I images that we don't always know uh, quite what to do with. I like that you said strange because I think a lot of times they are strange. It's almost being on an acid trip where you just, I mean, it, they're so crazy sometimes and nothing makes sense. So sometimes they're strange and sometimes they're straightforward. Is that right? Well, that's absolutely correct. What, what they all have in common is that they are metaphor. And let me help take some of the strangeness out of it. One of the things we don't realize is the extent to which in our daily conversations, we speak in the language of metaphors. Now, let me give you just some examples of some expressions that we use all the time. Don't get carried away. Now, if you mm. think about that expression literally, that doesn't make any sense. You know, is some, somebody going to pick you up and carry you out of the room? Or he was in over his head. Well, just exactly what does that mean? Does it mean he was drowning? I have, I have one. How about feel free? Like, what does that mean to feel, f feel free to call me or feel free to, you know, I, I always wonder what that was for. <laughs> exactly. And what, what these are, are these are, ex these are visual images that we attach to abstract ideas that helps make them easier to understand. He caught my eye. What does that mean? Does that mean it grabbed your eyeball? No, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a visual image that we use to try to express an abstract concept. And that's the language of dreams. The difference is that when we say, well, he caught my eye, we're so used to its abstract meaning that we um, make, don't, don't take it quite literally. But when it comes in a dream, the image that you would see would be somebody holding somebody else's eye and suddenly it becomes very poignant and uh, quite startling uh, and we wake up and wonder what that absurdity was all about. So that's, that's why the images are so often strange in dreams. Um, they, are, they are metaphors, and they are metaphors, usually visual metaphors, but not always. Uh, and, and their purpose is to help us bring to consciousness an abstract concept that we're, we're working on. Um, one, one of the dreams that, that I have t uh, talked about on the radio before was somebody who, a woman who was in the delivery room giving birth. And when, it, when the baby came out, it was not human. It was a football. And it had on the side painted on it an elephant. And so what she had given birth to, again, this is in metaphor, was a political football because she was quite convinced on the other side there was going to be a donkey. So the elephant and the donkey, the Republicans and the Democrats. Okay, that's wild. I had a dream one time that I gave birth to a chicken. So what does that mean? <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot because it was, it was the craziest dream. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Well, okay, so uh, the thing to, to be careful not to do here is to try to make really uh, uh, broad generalizations about the meanings of things. But if you were in a session with me, I would say, Lini, tell me about chickens. Yeah. Now I'm putting you on the spot, see? I oh, know. <laughs> Just uh, pretend, pretend I'm five years old and, and I come to you and I say, Lini, I don't know anything about chickens. Tell me about chickens. I would say that, uh, actually, I would be, as a five-year-old, I would say how cute uh, they are running around and that they lay eggs and they have beautiful little chicks. And then as an adult, I would say there are times where it brings up fear if you feel, um, you know, insecure or chicken of something. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, let's talk about eggs for a second. Tell me about eggs. So eggs, I think, are full of uh, life force and they reproduce, and they are abundant to me. Okay. So if this dream were mine, Lainey, I would say that I, I had given birth 
to something in myself that was full of life force, uh, that was abundant, but at the same time was an element that might have an element of fear to it. So the thing to do would be maybe to go back to that time and say, was there something going on in your life at that moment that you felt nervous about something that you were doing, maybe a new project, um, maybe some kind of a, um, an adventure or a conversation even that you might have where you felt it was full of life, full of nutrition, uh, full of reproductive possibilities, but at the same time was something you were a little bit fearful about. That was totally delicious. Thank you, David. <laughs> That was great. We don't have to go. I, I'm sure this happened a while ago. It did. But I, you, but those stay with you. The ones that you're like a little perplexed about, but you totally triggered that when you mentioned your other uh, story. Yeah. Well, th that's, that's how dreams work. And again, it's n never intended. Well, there are some times when dreams are intended to be taken literally, but even when they are intended to be taken literally, they always have this sense of metaphoric overlay to them, a, a symbolic language uh, that, that dreams speak in. Um, and it's really important to get the dreamer's own input about what those things are, because even when the dream symbols are archetypical, uh, they can mean very different things to, to different dreamers. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was about to ask you, are there the top 10 items that you know that if it means this, I know we talked a little bit about that in the first segment, that a, a car typically represents oneself. So if you're having a dream of a, um, a hot rod or a beautiful car, it means you're really pleased with your body. You know, if I got that correctly, and of course we'll um, learn more. But I didn't know, like you're saying, if, it, if they're individualized or if there's a typical stereotype of if this happens, it means this. Like dreams make change, you know, means a change in your life. Do you have sort of a top, um, top five or uh, different ones that you are familiar with that people all in general as a collective dream about? Well, I, I think there are kinds of uh, certain kinds of dreams that uh, that many people have. Um, but again, it's really important not to generalize. For okay. example, uh, a dream of being chased by something sinister. That, that you're, you're trying to escape from something uh, and you can't quite get away. That's a dream that's very common. Um, and very often it's about something that you feel somehow um, is uh, affecting you uh, in, in a way that you're not ready to deal with it. Another one that's very similar like that is you're about to be in a performance of some kind and you get on stage and you don't have any clothes on. That's, that's a very common dream where you feel, in essence, unprepared. Those are kinds of uh, typical kinds of dreams. There are other kinds of dreams where you're flying or falling. Uh, those are typical. Um, and then there is this whole array of dreams where the symbols just are very strange if you try to see them literally. But uh, if, if I sound as if I'm hedging a little bit here, let's go back to the symbol of the car. Um, maybe it's your physical body, but a car, if you were to ask somebody, tell me about a car, they might say, well, it's a vehicle. Well, okay, a vehicle, do you mean a physical vehicle? Or it can also be a vehicle on a completely different level. Um, it could be a vehicle for your own self-promotion. It could be a vehicle for you to gain a degree of spirituality in your life. It could be a vehicle um, for communication with someone with whom you've had uh, uh, a, a, a falling out, let's say. And so the, these kinds of, it, it's, the symbol itself needs to be seen within the context of the dream uh, that, that the dreamer is having. And, and that's really important to do. Uh, otherwise, it's, 
it's likely that there's going to be a, some sort of misinterpretation of the dream that happens. Yeah, if I'm being, so that's, that's my excuse for being a little bit vague here. Those are some kinds of general dreams that we have, but outside of that generality, it's really important to sit with the dreamer and find out the context in which this dream took place. Um, and usually it's something that has happened quite recently, although there are exceptions to that too. There are uh, dreams that, uh, well, I can give you an example of uh, a woman who <clears throat> was having a, a repetitive dream. Uh, this was one that was coming back and back and back to her uh, o about once a month uh, over a period of many years uh, in which she was trying to escape from someone who was attacking her. That was the, the general uh, gist of the dream. Um, and so this was not something that, not, well, it was something that was current, r relevant to her in her current life, but it was this, a, an issue and the same issue that had been bothering her for years and years and years. And during our conversation, what came out was, uh, very interestingly, she's uh, Japanese-American, um, grew up in Tokyo, no, was born in Tokyo, but then her family moved right away to the west coast of the U.S. Uh, and but her parents took her back to Japan to study in Japanese schools every summer. And in the fall, she would come back to the States and she would study in American schools. So while she was in the States, she didn't look like your average American Caucasian. And so she felt really out of place. And when she was in Japan, she looked as if she ought to be Japanese, and yet she spoke English, and many of her attitudes and expressions were American, and so she didn't really quite fit in there either. And there was this monster chasing her that had been chasing her for years and years, and it had to do, as we discussed it with, the fact that she needed to decide who she was herself without input from parents and without input, input from uh, colleagues or students or anyone else. David, we have to take a break, but when we come back, let's get into a conversation about dream states during the day. I think that's really fascinating because I'm a daydreamer and I'm sure a lot of other people are, and I'd love to know if it's what that means versus having some cosmic intuitive downloads. So stick around. We have so much more with David Ravinas, author of Always Dreaming. We'll be right back on Zeta Global Radio. Do you want to develop skills that can help others to heal the past, correct the present, and embrace the future? Would you like to turn your passion for guiding others on their spiritual path into a profession? Dolores Cannon, pioneering researcher, author of 19 books, and renowned healer and speaker refined her unique training method of advanced hypnotherapy over the past four and a half decades. Today, Quantum Healing Hypnosis Therapy Technique is the world's fastest growing accredited training course. Level 1 is available online now. It's easy to learn, affordable, and effective. Level 2 is the advanced module. QHHT has trained and certified over 6,000 practitioners. Take advantage of our exclusive offer for ZGR listeners only. If you register today for Level 1 Online Certification Program, you'll receive a 10% discount by using code ZETA2015. That's ZETA2015. This offer is valid until June 31st, 2015. For more information and to enroll, please visit DoloresCannon.com slash learn dash QHHT dash online. And don't forget to use our exclusive discount code ZETA2015. Hi, this is Andrea Williams, publisher of Natural Awakenings Magazine in New Mexico, your monthly green, healthy lifestyle publication. Each issue shares national and local cutting-edge information about health, nutrition, fitness, personal growth, green living, and the products and services that support a healthy lifestyle. We invite you to share your business, such as acupuncture, integrative medicine, body work, education, healthy food, or solar energy, to name a few. Are you from out of town or in town wanting to share an event or workshop? For advertising rates and sizes, please email publisher at naturalawakeningsnnm.com or call 505-999-1319 again, 505-999-1319. Our readers like to hear from you.
The Lab Recording Studio is located in Albuquerque, New Mexico, the spiritual heart of the Southwest. Whether you're a singer-songwriter, band, voiceover actor, or have a film or TV show that needs scoring, The Lab is a wonderful facility to work in. The list of clients range from Sony, Macy's, and Toyota to independent films such as John Nussbaumer's Maria Morte and shorts for Sperry Topsiders, Ralph Lauren, and more. Product quality is that of any big New York or LA studio, only without the big city expenses. Featuring marvelous places to stay and historical and spiritual sites to visit, consider The Lab for your next recording experience. You can visit us at thelabnm.com, facebook.com slash thelababq, or email us direct at info at thelabnm.com. Welcome back to the show here on Zeta Global Radio. I am thrilled to continue the conversation here with David Ravinas, author of Always Dreaming, Gaining Insights from the Metaphors of Our Sleeping and Waking Lives. And we've been talking about all sorts of different aspects to dreaming. But the topic right now I think I'd love to phase into is about daydreaming because everyone, of course, always associates dreaming at night and whether we're it was a good dream or a bad dream or a total nightmare. But let's talk, David, right now about daydreams. All right. Well, I'm going to make a distinction to start off with. A difference between daydreaming, which is letting your mind wander and sort of fantasizing something, and what I call the waking dream, which is a little bit different. Now, in the first uh, segment, we talked about how dreams speak in metaphors and that they come to us in these crazy symbols. But that is an experience that doesn't only happen when we're asleep at night. It's something that happens 24 hours a day. And that same metaphoric overlay to the experiences we have occurs during the daytime when we're awake. Um, maybe the best thing to do is to give an example of what I call a waking dream. Well, I can, I, let me give some categories first. If you have an experience that's shocking or you have an experience that's totally bizarre, something that has never happened to you before, or you have an experience that repeats, the same thing happens over and over again uh, in, a, in a series of four or five episodes. And these are events during waking life. I'm not talking about dreaming at night now. Those are the ones that are important to look at. Now, let me give an example of what I'm talking about, a waking dream. There is a colleague of mine who lives in a house and the house has a hallway and in the hallway there's a door and you open the door and it goes right to a set of steep stairs that goes into his basement where he has a little rack with tools on a workbench. So he realized that one of his drill bits from his drill was uh, dull. And he went to the hardware store and he got a replacement drill which drill bit which came in one of those little plastic bags. He came home. He didn't feel like taking it all the way down to his workshop. So he just opened the door and on the staircase side of the door uh, wrapped this bag, so he thought, around the door handle and closed the door. Uh, what he didn't realize was that he hadn't wrapped it very securely and the bag slipped off and sort of slid about halfway down the staircase. The next time he went to his workbench thinking about something else and forgetting that he had left the little bag there. He started walking down the stairs and sure enough, he slipped on this plastic bag. Um, his feet went right out from under him and he went crashing down, um, landing on his backside uh, at the bottom of this staircase. Um, now, this fit all the categories of, oh, I, I should just add, fortunately, that there was no serious damage to him. He, oh, he, good. He was plenty bruised, but nothing was broken. So, um, here he, 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 the way most of us would treat an incident like this, which happened while he was awake during the daytime, is to say, well, that's just one of those things that life does that one of those unfortunate events that we all have to live through and what I really need to do is just get a nice cup of hot tea and sit uh, or lie, lie along a couch or on my bed for a little while until these bruises heal and then get over my stiffness. 
Well, that's dealing with life from the objective perspective, and that's important to do. But there is also a metaphoric overlay that is exactly the same thing as dreaming at night. This was an unusual experience. This was a shocking experience. It, was, it fit actually two of the categories. And he knows about this phenomenon because it's something I talk about a lot. And so he came to me and we did the dream symbols exactly the way you and I did the symbol of the chicken. Mm -hmm. We wanted to find out what was going on that would cause him to slip on a staircase, that would cause him to slip on a bag that contained a drill bit uh, as he was going into his basement to work on his tools. And without going to, into a great deal of detail, it did absolutely just like a nighttime sleeping dream relate to an issue that he was working on, which was that he needed to make a breakthrough in a certain facet of his life. And the drill, he needed to drill a hole through a, a solid surface. Okay, think metaphorically again. Drill a hole through a solid surface so that he could see through it, through to the other side, to where the light was coming through this solid surface. Wow. The drill bit had been dull. He needed to get it sharpened, but he ignored it. He put it on the stairs, and he wasn't very careful about it. And so in the process, he slipped, which we often do when we are trying to face something in our lives, but it was not a serious uh, event for him. There was no serious damage. It was only a question that he n needed to wake up, as it were, and pay attention to this. Let me ask you something, because um, we only have a few minutes left. And when you're we were explaining that story, it reminded me of the idea of deja vu. Well, the title of the book is Always Dreaming. And the idea is that no matter what we are experiencing, whether we are awake whether we're asleep, whether we're in the middle of astral travel, whether we're having prophetic experiences that come true, whether we are in the middle of deja vu, there is always this metaphoric overlay that is delivering a message. It's our own state of the union message that's coming to us that says, this is where you are right now and you need to look at that and perhaps even make a course correction or congratulate yourself on something that you've done well. But if you pay attention, no matter what the experience is, deja vu or otherwise, you will learn something about yourself that will help you progress on your own spiritual path. Deja vu makes you stop for a minute, at least for me. It's like, oh my goodness, I'm having a deja vu. I seem to always announce it to whoever I'm with. It's like, okay, I've experienced this. Are you experiencing this? Does this seem like we've been here before? I mean, it does, it kind of puts you, it, it, it stops you. I guess that's how it's serving its purpose for lessons. You, you nailed it. Uh, you nailed it, Lainey. That, that is exactly what dreams do. And the reason they are, their imagery at nighttime when we're asleep is so shocking, or as in the waking dream of the guy falling down the steps, that too was shocking. The idea is that it wants you to pay attention. So if you can do this more gently with your, with your deja vu experience where it stops you, then the next step would be, just like with your chicken, to look at it and say, okay, what are the metaphors here? What are the symbols? And what am I trying to get for myself out of this experience? Do you have any seminars coming up or ways that people can reach you further after this interview? Well, uh, probably uh, the best way to do it is to go to my website, which is teacherofdreams.com, all one word. Um, and that gives everything that I'm doing. But the answer to your question is yes, there is a, a lecture I'm giving here in Portland, Oregon, which is where I am, um, uh, coming up in the second half of June. And then in July, I'm going to be in Arkansas at Ozark Mountain a Transformation Conference there, and I will be giving a lecture and a workshop and individual uh, dream interpretation sessions there. Um, and I'm always available uh, via email. If somebody has a dream that's really bothering them, please feel free to contact me. I'm happy to help out with that. That's great. And we will continue to also track what you're doing. We're good friends with Julia Cannon and everyone at Ozark Martin Mountain Publishing. And I certainly wish that I could be there in July at that event. I know that Catherine and Patrick are also going to be there. 
really, you get to a point sometimes, I know uh, we talked about nightmares on the, pr- the previous segment with Catherine and Patrick, that, you know, these are more than strange. I mean, they're startling and they stay with us for a very long time. And sometimes you just need somebody to help interpret us along the way to guide us in a little bit more of a direction. So what you're doing is just phenomenal for people. Well, thank you. And thank you so much for having me. And yes, it's the dreams that stay with you. It's the ones that don't go away um, because they they are s- fixed there in your imagination or maybe they are repeating or they were really startling. Those are the ones to pay attention to. I have a question that came in from one of our listeners, if you don't mind letting me uh, share that with you and what your thoughts are. He had asked that he says he dreams a lot about driving in the mountains, narrow roads, mudslides, just that whole sort of voyage. I wonder if there's any insight into that I, we can share with him. Uh, now, okay, let me make sure I understand correctly that, that he's driving in the mountains near mudslides. The email just states that I dream a lot about driving in the mountains, and it says there are narrow roads and mudslides, etc. What does that mean? And I guess it sounds like it's a frequent dream. To the dreamer, um, I, the first thing I have to say is I cannot tell you what your dream means, but here are some ideas for you to consider And what you should do is, as I talk, as you listen to me say these things, some of them are going to really hit home, and some of them may be off the mark, and only you will know. Um, uh, Again, driving in a car is a vehicle of some sort, and you're going up a mountain, or you're in the mountains, which means it's a vehicle that's taking you someplace pretty high within yourself. But yes, there are narrow roads that the higher you go on your spiritual path, the narrower the roads get. And yes, there are indeed mudslides. We all, we, all of us, as we travel along the path, whether it's a path of life or whether we see that uh, specifically as a spiritual journey, uh, there are inevitably dangers, uh, um, things that are going to cause us to slip back, as it were, in a mudslide, uh, slip down the mountain away that we're, where we might have to start again and try again. Those dangers are always there. Uh, but if if you were to take my advice, I would tell you, keep driving in that car as high as you can get into that mountain and just trust that even if you end up in a, la- in a mudslide for a little while, you'll get back out of it and you'll be back on those narrow roads which are just going to get narrower and narrower uh, as you continue on your journey. Love it. Thank you so much, David. And thank you so much for spending the time here on Zeta Global Radio. We look forward to connecting another time down the road. We wish you the best in July at the conference, as well as all the work that you're doing. And we appreciate being here and enlightening us further on day and night dreaming. Everybody have a restful weekend and happy dreaming. And thank you so much for listening to Zeta Global Radio. Thank you and take care. Hi everyone, welcome to Zeta Global Radio here on BBS, Saturdays at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I am your host, Lainey Savante Quirk. Join us as we come together for your visionary platform for spiritual journalism. We'll be interviewing authors, musicians, filmmakers, and world leaders who are coming together into one accord and sharing a story. ZGR is part of the Zeta Global Group Network. 